Hey everybody, in this video we are focused on how interest rate changes play out in the open economy. That's right, it's when you get that problem that starts with an interest rate change, that's the cause, the initiator of the problem, and then it asks you for all those downstream impacts of that interest rate change. That's what this video is all about. And this is the model that we're gonna use. It's a super simple model. I love this model for answering these type of questions. We're gonna see it play out in this video, but let me just get you up to speed on it. First, I've got a domestic economy. I've got the United States right here. That's gonna be our domestic economy. I've got a product market and I'm associating the current account with the product market, of course, because the first sub account in the current account is the sales and purchases of goods and services. So when we get changes in net exports, we're thinking current account all the way. I've got the financial account associated with the financial market and then I've got that over here in our foreign economy as well I've got the currency exchange market sitting in between these two countries that's what we want to think about as we do these problems okay so I'm integrating the balance of payments with that exchange market now here's the deal when the interest rate changes okay the interest rate is the price of financial capital so I associate that with our financial market so I'm gonna put that interest rate change right there. That's my financial market. And let's just say that the interest rate goes up in the United States. So I've got an interest rate going up in the United States. Again, prices coordinate economic activity. Interest rates are prices. Now, when that interest rate goes up in the United States, maybe because of tight or contractionary monetary policy, what is gonna happen is money is gonna flow towards the US financial markets, right? We're gonna get those capital inflows coming in. Now, I want you to understand in our currency exchange market, what that would do is that would cause the shifting of our supply and demand curves. So I like to put a little one right here and say, hey, that's my shift. And again, we're getting the shifting of the curves in that foreign uh, currency exchange market because this exogenous variable to the currency exchange market changed. What is that exogenous variable? The interest rate. Now, as we think about it, okay, money's coming this way, euros are coming into this market demanding dollars, right? So you get that increase in the supply of euros. So of course the euro is gonna depreciate. Why are they supplying their euros? To get those dollars. So the dollar is going to appreciate, okay? now. This change in the currency values, and these are basically saying the same thing, right? The dollar is appreciating in terms of the euro, so the euro is depreciating in terms of the dollar. They're the same thing. These changes in the exchange rate are gonna cause the movement on those supply and demand curves in this market, bringing us back into balance. But what this is causing is money to flow, of course, the opposite way, right? As the dollar appreciates, this stuff is getting cheaper, right? <laughs> same thing, if the euro depreciates, this stuff's getting cheaper. They both mean the same thing. And this stuff is getting more expensive for Europeans. So when you get that money flowing in, you get that money flowing out, and we kind of already know that, right? Our balance of payments has to balance. So as you get those credits coming in, to the United States, you're therefore gonna of course get some debits or credits to the financial account that is. You're gonna get debits to the current account in the United States. And of course you can see the credits coming in here and credits cause debits there, okay? Remember, I've got that balance of payments, current account, financial account, current account, financial account. Hey, we're ready to answer pretty much every question that we need to. I'm gonna start off with these questions, so do a kind of an interesting pivot right there. So the supply of dollars, that interest rate goes up, we're not gonna supply our dollars, right? We're gonna supply less dollars, we're gonna keep more of our savings in our own financial market, so we're gonna see that decrease in the supply of dollars. And of course, for the demand for dollars, we've already talked about, right? Europeans are bringing their euros in, demanding the dollar. The dollar, we need that increase in demand and therefore the dollar is going to appreciate, right? The dollar is gonna appreciate. Both of these two things cause the dollar to appreciate. We can just read our model right here and say, hey, we're getting credits in the financial accounts. Credits lead to surpluses. So I'm just gonna put a C and then we oftentimes might say, hey, that's gonna move us towards surplus if we started with an original balance of zero and zero in both accounts. <clears throat> And then I've got my debits in my current account, so I've got my debits, which will lead to deficits, right? D to D, pretty straightforward. Now, money's flowing out. Again, remember the dollar appreciated. 
this stuff became cheaper to Americans, so the imports are going up in America. This stuff became more expensive to Europeans. Exports are going down. That means net exports are going down here in the United States. Now, we could do all the same type of questions for uh, the European economy, right? All the same type. So supply of euros, we've already talked about when that interest rate goes up. Europeans are going to supply their euros as they want to get their wealth over here, right? Money flows towards higher interest rates. It flows to where you can get the highest returns. You get that increase in the supply. Now, Americans are going to want to save here less, so they're going to demand less euros. Both of these changes in those two curves are going to cause the euro to depreciate. Oops, depreciate. There we go. We'll put a P right there. They're going to depreciate. Now, as far as my two accounts, I've already got the answers. We've already written them right there, right? As far as the financial account goes, we're getting debits. Debits lead to deficits, right? And we got the credits right there. Credits lead to surpluses. I actually like the terms debits and credits just by the way, uh, but AP test often says, hey, let's start with an original balance in both accounts of zero. Where would we move towards? And so that's why I'm putting in that deficit and surplus. AP answers are often looking for those terms. All right. And then net exports. Again, the euro depreciated. This stuff is cheaper. Hey, the dollar appreciated. That also is the same way of saying this stuff is now cheaper to Americans, right? Europe is going to sell more exports to the United States. States, we're going to get an increase in net exports. Love this very simple model. This model, again, is for when you get changes in interest rates. Increase or decrease here, increase or decrease there. Very easy, okay, to therefore get all the answers that you need to get, right? In this particular case, interest rate went up, money flows in. The interest rate would have went down, money would have flowed out, right? But in this case, the interest rate went up, money flows in here, which means it has to flow out that way. I hope that makes sense to you. Try this model out. I think you'll be able to answer those questions really easy when you get those interest rate changes. Hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.